Well, Jamie, it's official. Eric Almirola is starting this race in the number 20 car. The team quickly changed those seat inserts, and Almirola rolled off pit road. Now, Denny Hamlin is currently still on his way to the track. According to the team, he's getting a police escort. I asked crew chief Dave Rogers if the team would think about making a driver change mid-race. He said as long as Eric feels comfortable in that car, they'll leave him in it. He won the pole. They'll let him win the race. Yeah, right. Back in 2007, Eric Almirola was driving for Joe Gibbs Racing. He had qualified on the pole for the AT&T 250 at the Milwaukee Mile, but would ultimately be replaced by Denny Hamlin before the race. The problem was, Denny Hamlin had to fly from the airport to the track in a helicopter just before the race, and the track's helipad was being used for spectator parking, so Hamlin's chopper would have to return to the airport, and he'd have to take a police escort back to the track, a mean of transportation that would be too slow for Hamlin to arrive for the start of the race. <laughs> So the team just decided to have Eric Almirola drive the car he had put on the pole. Seems reasonable, right? It was because of a sponsor commitment to Milwaukee-based Rockwell Automation that Hamlin was scheduled to drive the car in the first place. The same commitment would cause problems later on, but we'll get to that in a minute. Eric was doing a great job in the number 20 car, leading the first 43 laps of the race and staying inside the top 5 for every single lap he raced. However, his momentum would be cut short during a pit cycle on lap 59. Lo and behold, then he made it to the track, and he would end up replacing Eric mid-race. This was a very controversial decision, and left everyone wondering why they would do this, until the team gave their post-race interviews. Uh, it was a group decision. Uh, it's tough, you know, Denny, Denny really didn't want to get in it, we didn't really want to take Eric out. But this is, uh, this is Rockwell's global headquarters, and we got a lot of Rockwell employees on the stand. Um, I didn't want to do it. I mean, I, I knew he would be really upset as, as well as he was running at the time. Uh, you know, but uh, we, we got to do what we got to do. And, you know, I, I definitely it wasn't my choice. But uh, for the sure thing to come out here and get this win after such a long trip and not being able to land and uh, everything just sitting out the first 60 laps, that was amazing to come back and win this thing. This would lead to Eric leaving Joe Gibbs Racing just a month later and joining Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. In my opinion, this wasn't a strategic decision by any means. It was a selfish decision made by a large corporation that ended up changing the future of NASCAR. I mean, where do you think Eric Amarola would be now if he had stayed with Joe Gibbs? It's things like this, the closing of Furniture Row Racing, the closing of Michael Waltrip Racing, the shutdown of Ganassi's Xfinity Series team, and countless smaller team failures that show how detrimental sponsors can be to their teams and to their drivers.